So Beth Palismet is our next presenter. I don't know what you're going to present because you don't have slides. I know. But there's a sense. Uh, until we feel like eating lunch. <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs> we, we need help better communicating and expressing and thinking about community engagement. Um, we have interesting, important work. Often it's communicated in like bar charts and scatter plots and mm -hmm. statistics and PowerPoint slides mm -hmm. to narrow audiences. So hopefully it will help us broaden our communication efforts. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everyone. So as you're all speaking, I want you to know that I'm taking copious notes because I'm teaching a freshman class called Comedy Matters. And we're looking at a study that came out from American University called The Laughter Effect that's using comedy for positive social change. And then we're putting that together with climate communication. And this is something that I do through Inside the Greenhouse. It's an initiative that I co-founded with Max Boykoff, who is an um, environmental studies professor here, and Becca Safran who's an e-bio professor. And we created this to really deepen our understanding about how we can communicate climate in a way that's not gonna put people's backs against the wall. It's gonna maybe like open them up through beauty or bring them to tears through a song or give them an experience together that's embodied, that's in the flesh, that's something that they feel. So that's really what I bring to it. And I, of my cohorts, I bring that the most because I'm a theater professor and I'm a weird one. So that works well for me. I've been um, really, you know, here I am in your house, I, you know, the, the book Philosophy in the Flesh, The Embodied Mind and Its Challenges to Western Thought gave me language around things that I intuitively knew, that the mind is inherently embodied and that abstract concepts are largely metaphoric and that there are major findings in cognitive science that can, you know, give me backing in this. And they really bring us to where we find that there, these findings of the science of the mind are inconsistent with the central parts of Western philosophy. They require our culture to abandon some of its deepest philosophical assumptions. Reason is not purely literal, but it's largely metaphorical and imaginative. Reason is not dispassionate, but it's emotionally engaged. So I feel like I'm justified in being so emotional and passionate about my work. I feel like it's my, my work to do is to um, really help people get an embodied, participatory experience about all these things that we care about and the ideas at play. Um, what we find with comedy is that it's really highly effective in um, taking complex ideas and breaking them down so that they're understandable. And so that the nuances, the thing that's beautiful about comedy, it's all about double meanings. It's highly nuanced just by the nature of what it is. It's really against that narrow-minded, solid, one way of thinking things. It cracks it open and shows the hypocrisies, and people laugh at them, which is highly destabilizing. It's a destabilizing mechanism in society. I actually feel like there's a lot of research done around how it's been done in a satirical way, where we're taking targeted people and exposing them. I am actually interested in a kinder, more gentle form of comedy that is more based on humor acknowledging our shared humanity, and how do we break that open and start to heal and find new pathways through comedy in that way. So that's really where my research lies. So the thing I want to present on you to, to you today, though, is something that's really been culminating. And this is a performance that I created called Shine. And so this is the website. You can find Shine by just going to our website, Inside the Greenhouse, go up to Shine worked with a student this past year in creating this website. And as you can see, Shine is a musical performance for youth community engagement and resilience planning. It weaves together climate science and artistic expression into this funny, powerful story. Shine spans 300 million years of geological time to convey how humanity, energy, and climate are interrelated. I kind of want to, I'm going to bring up the trailer now, because I want to show you. It's like, for me to stand up here and explain it is not quite as smart as having me just have the youth speak for themselves. So I want you to just, oh wait, we didn't do the, did you do the sound? It should be on. Yeah, okay, good. But it's not. But it's not. <coughs> Turn it here, up. Here, I'm going to. So is it on? It should be. Maybe the computer needs to. Yeah, 
in the computer mode. Great. Okay. So, so the name of the performance, I'll just say something else while Leaf works on that. So the name of the performance is Shine, and then I wrote a, um, so I um, created Shine, ended up touring it, and um, then wrote a book about the tour, and what I learned from all these different communities about um, how performance can be used as effectively to engage youth in authorship of plans for resilience. I, I hold this as resilience planning for a couple of reasons. One, because I love to plan. I'm a planner. <laughs> I have like, all throughout my marriage, I've had multiple widow plans for how I would make it at different stages of my life. Now that I have a tenure track job, I'm a little bit less planning for the widow plan, but you know, have those plans in place. Um, I also am identified largely, and I've been formed largely by being a mother. Being a mother makes you a nurturer. It makes you somebody who looks down the path to see what's likely to happen to someone and you want to help avert that. So that's really largely who I am. And while he's doing this as well, another thing that really um, informed me doing this project was the idea that when I was in fourth grade, we had these environmental educators come to our school in Sheboygan Falls, Wisconsin, and they taught us a song, and the song went like this. Pollution, pollution, you can use the newest toothpaste, <laughs> then rinse your mouth with industrial waste. <laughs> I share that with you because I'm 53 years old now and I still remember that song. <laughs> I think that we can like get our ideas into culture, into music, into story, and we have hooks for remembering them. And the meaning stays with us. And if it's clever, we remember it. I'll just keep talking while we're at yeah, dealing yeah. with this. So, um, in order to use art to create climate communication, it's got to be really good art, and it's got to be really sound science. So in creating this, I got together a fantastic team. Um, my artistic collaborators were three-time Grammy, well, three Grammy winner Tom Wassinger, who composed the music for this. When you hear the, you see the trailer, you'll hear the music, and it's just dropped it beautiful and funny. Um, the choreography partner I got was Arthur Frederick. He's somebody who works with the National Dance Institute in New York City. This is a thing that gets into the schools, gets all kinds of kids moving, dancing at a really high level of artistic excellence. <laughs> he knows how to make movement that is accessible, but artistically excellent. Because something happens when kids experience the artistic excellence. They start to transfer over that same level of excellence over to their, um, their solution making to climate problems that they identify at the local level. So um, those were my two primary artistic um, people. My primary scientific collaborators was Patty Romero-Lenko. She's a, a scientist at NCAR, National Renewable Energy, no, National Center for Atmospheric Research, and she heads up a program called Urban Futures. So she was kind of perfect for this. Um, this was a project I was doing through the um, Rockefeller Foundation's um, 100 Resilient Cities Initiative. And Boulder is one of the beginning, the first cities that entered into this initiative. And um, I went to one of their first meetings, and I recognized there what I could be offering. And that was, how to make sure that youth voices are a part of these plans that these cities are coming up with. And to bring, not only do we, we benefit from the youth having their perspectives shared, but also how do we benefit from having... Yeah. There it is. Okay, can you make it big and then we show it? Wait, I am a Soai and I'm 11 years old. We made this timeline for the backdrop of the play. Thank you. Perfect. Let us speak for itself for a second. I am a Soai and I'm 11 years old. We made this timeline for the backdrop of the play. And we have present day, it's kind of sad, a lot of carbon in the air. will combine to be 
the fabric of community. Shine is a musical performance for youth community engagement in resilience planning. It weaves together climate science and artistic expression into a funny and powerful story. Shine spans 300 million years of geological time to convey how humanity, energy, and climate are interrelated. This combination of music, movement, and story stirs feelings about the values that bind our communities together. Rehearsing each part of the musical immerses youth in a lexicon surrounding climate, energy, and resilience. Energy can either be created or destroyed. It leads participants in embodying different aspects of climate science and human development that led us to the point where we are now. The first half of the show is scripted, composed, and choreographed to convey this story that has already been told by history. The second half is open to be authored by local youth to generate solutions for their city's resilient future. Shine celebrates this experience and unites both the audience and the performers to strengthen their resolve to act on their ideas. website where it says shine okay great. Sit back here. thank you so um i wanted to, if you can go to the tour project that'd be great great so other other um collaborators nicole berger she's a um she really studies photosynthesis in depth and we were doing our section on photosynthesis we got the choreographer and her into a dance studio and we um decided how do we how do we best dramatize something like photosynthesis how do we get it down so that there's language that she feels comfortable with that we've done it, that we don't make it too complex, that we make it accessible, that we make it so that you can dance it. How are you going to be able to dance all these different aspects? So that's the process for how we created this musical. And each step along the way, we were dealing with scientists who were really helping us understand if we were really getting the resilience part of it correct, if we were getting the, um, the science beneath it correct. And that was really a, a good thing to have with the music. Um, to date, to date, Shine has been produced in a whole lot of different cities. Part of this was the tour portion of it. This was me taking it to different places. And now I'm done taking it places. And now it lives in a book. And it lives in this website that has all the tools and the support necessary for anybody to put this on for engaging youth. Um, <coughs> The book that I wrote is called Performance for Resilience, Engaging Youth on Energy and Climate Through Music, Movement, and Theater. I'm going to pass these around. I made 20 of these. So take one if you think you'd like your university to order a copy, or if you know of anybody who might want to review it for me, that'd be great. I'd love that. That'd be really helpful. Um, great. The theory behind coming into this show was practice-based research, generating knowledge through doing. It really seeks to harvest local knowledge. I wanted it to be embodied and fun. I really believe that fun is one of the most sustainable forces on Earth. We will return to behaviors again and again and again if they are fun. Um, I feel like I got tenure, and I thought, I want to have fun. I really <laughs> want to have fun. I want to be done writing books soon. I have one more I need to write, but like, I want to go out and do it. Yeah, you guys go do the research. I'll put it into things and make them into characters and get the students up on the stages doing it. Kind of teasing out those complex nuances that you guys are, are working on. So um, yeah, that's a good way to look at it. I also feel like it's based on this principle of active culture, that people are frequently going to act on things more if it's a product of their own labor rather than watching other people perform and present something to them. I think people often, we all know this, they feel overwhelmed by climate, they avoid it. If it's something that's fun, um, participatory, and involves their kids, they'll show up. We all know that through our children is a huge way. 
But then we really bring in all the science that's really going to inform us on how to do this well. We use um, Eco, um, Eco America has that Connecting on Climate Guide to Effective Climate Change Communication. Um, Ezra Markowitz was one of them. He came to campus to visit us. He says, keep it local. Appeal to people's already held values. Focus on a single issue at a time if you're communicating. Emphasize the positive. Identify co-benefits to climate and energy solutions. And frame solutions as an opportunity. So this has really been a big part of the work. And the youth contributions, I feel like they lead us. In the, there's a unique quality that happens when youth are leading us. They're not as set in their behaviors. They're all about change. And they're willing to adapt. And that willingness is carried over into youth. Um, Brett was one of the people that was there. When we did this show at SEEK, which is our Sustainability Energy Environment Complex on campus, we had city folks coming in. We partnered them with youth. I had worked with the middle school for about uh, two months, preparing these youth to lead our city's leaders through this creative process. And it was beautiful to see how they performed the show. And then at the second half of the show is the youth creating local <laughs> solutions and creating dramatic skits about that. And for this one, we did it on the spot. We had youth who each, like they had a number. There were about 150 people there. They each had a number, one through 10. They took their group in. They led their group in creating a skit in, within the minute. Then they led the group in performing each one. And it was like. It happened, snap, snap, snap. And at the end, the youth were really impressed with themselves, and I think the community was impressed with them and how well they were organized by them. I want to share with you this, just what does it do for the youth to be involved in something like this? I want to share a few responses by the youth themselves. <coughs> um, Leah Stode, seventh grader, said, you can learn a lot from action. Learning from other people and hearing their ideas got me even more into it. It opened my eyes to the fact that people who did the least amount of damage are those who are the most hurt. Charlotte Geraghty said, the arts are a way for me to express myself and how I feel. Because sometimes writing a paper just doesn't connect me as much as performing it. I tried to make it fun for the audience, but also to challenge the audience that this isn't just a play. This is actually happening. When I was leading my group in the skit, I tried to get everyone involved, so I asked for volunteers. They were really into it. I feel like people didn't realize that we young people have a say. And I don't think people really took us seriously until we showed them that we could lead this whole thing. <laughs> and then the one I love, Lucinda, who is really a unique person. In seventh grade, she said, being in the play made me felt like, feel like I could express how I think our city should change. That I could just stand up to whatever problems it might face. I feel like the arts are the most powerful means of communicating because you can get your message across in a way they can get to every kind of person. They can see the problem, and they can see what it is doing. Dance is a form of giving your message. When you dance, some people might see a message, and other people might see another. And you'll get a lot of different people that way. I feel like the play was very detailed in its portrayal of climate change and how it was caused and how it is our responsibility to fix it. I felt like at the final scene, when the big bad people <laughs> broke the fabric of community, that we caused this. We did this. It wasn't anybody else. We did this, and it's our responsibility to fix it. Which was really profound to hear what that meant to them. Um, when I did this um, performance, one of the stops was in New Orleans, and it was with a Catholic school. And I was really interested to see how that would jive with Catholic teaching. I was raised Catholic, and um, I was really moved by the Pope's encyclical on climate change. How many people have read that? Yeah, I just loved it. I, I mean, I'm, I, you know, I, I used to say there was a committee that made it hard for Beth Austin to be Catholic, and they kind of won. The committee won, as it turns out. But I still feel like I'm Catholic, so that was really gratifying. But we started out by doing the performance. We scaffolded them, creating their own solutions by having them enact one of the prayers that's from the um, encyclical. I just want to read this to you. We will use this as our lunchtime prayer. Not that I'm letting it just yet. God of love. Show us our place in the world as channels of your love for all of the creatures of this earth, for not one of them is forgotten in your sight. Enlighten those who possess power and money, that they may avoid the sin of indifference, that they may love the common good, advance the weak, care for the world in which they live. The poor of the earth are crying out. O oh Lord, seize us with the power and light. Help us to protect all life, to prepare for a better future, for the coming of your kingdom of justice, peace, love, beauty, Praise be to you. 
And the thing that was beautiful was that these kids acted this out and embodied it. And then when we brought it over to doing climate change solutions, they were already investing this in something that was something that was dear to them and that was based on their already previously held strong beliefs. The thing that was great was I was kind of like worried that the teachers were going to be going, I don't know, what do they think? Like, are they teaching evolution? Blah, blah, blah. And at the end, it was really gratifying to interview one of the teachers. And she said um, that they learned so much of it. And she said, no, we personally incorporate science and faith. These go hand in hand. Um, there was nothing that we heard. She felt like she was going to use some of these techniques in the classroom. So that was really gratifying. Youth are often characterized as being disruptive. We often tell them to be quiet, to be seen, and not heard. Shine invites and celebrates the disruption of the status quo by youth. Tom Wassinger, our composer and accompanist for Shine, who's traveled all over with me to do this, lovingly describes the rehearsal process as controlled chaos. The freedom of thought, the preposterous ideas, the radical concerns, the piercing focus, and the outright silliness have they, that they have brought to city planning through the Tour of Shine has been exceptional to witness. This approach offers a viable alternative mode for exploring, thinking, creating modes for living in this world. Certain performances, that moments that I've been privileged to witness through this tour give me the courage to hope that we may find a solution to be able to make the essential changes to stabilize our climate. Some of these include a seventh grader in London who's on the floor impersonating the River Thames, <laughs> and she is undulating as people are walking by and carelessly polluting into her. And then the expressive, <coughs> the physical expression that she gave when the scene changes and people recognize her dilemma and start to clean her up, the physical expression that she shared was just beautiful. Another moment when I'm at New York City, when we're doing this for the New York Convening for the City We Want conference, that was part of Urban Thinkers Conference, we were the, culmin the culminating plenary session for this preparation for Habitat 3, the UN Urban you know, Renewal Futures. And we are performing there, and Josh Sperling, who's an a engineer, an energy engineer locally, he was with NCAR now, he's with NREL, and he's doing this with me. He's been like a huge supporter throughout the project. And we're both in black lycra bodysuits pulling this um, brown cloth over the decaying plants and animals, which is the cast. And I look across at him and, and know that he's at a point in his career. <laughs> he's like searching for jobs. And the audience is UN delegates and policy you know. And he's like committed his body and his reputation to endorsing the, the importance of youth contributions. And that was really moving for me. Another thing, just being in Limpopo region in South Africa, watching lines of fifth, sixth, and seventh graders dancing in the out your outdoor park, you know, park to the final song shine. In New Orleans, watching the raucous grinding of hips by a giggling cluster of fourth grade boys in their Catholic school uniforms during the final dance number, it embodied a spirit that I wished I could unleash at the next city planning meeting <laughs> that I attended. In Connecticut, I watched a boy who had just barely survived the Sandy Hook school shootings two years previous, had been in the building crouching in a bathroom. And he was creating a skit with his fellow classmates. It gave me a glimpse of youth resilience in the face of the unthinkable. So what we do to plan in these coming de decades is going to determine if we can survive and thrive on this planet as a species. But how we make this plan and who we include in the planning could determine our future just as much. And I'm going to finalize this by saying that um, I have a section in my book where I talk about um, what does music do? What does it do? It, it brings together all the thoughts. So I just think of like, everything that we've experienced so far this morning, what we're going to experience in the rest of the conference, if we can kind of put that into a song that we all can dance to, then we can carry that forth by humming that tune in our heads, much like pollution, pollution. So I'm going to ask